Yes, so just to start off the discussion, we just uh, uh, broke the cost components of an ale, a beer, a glass of beer, for example. Uh, so we took uh, uh, Netherlands as the country. Uh, so Robert, you know, uh, every time we drink a gla glass of beer in Amsterdam, we pay roughly 40% as EBIT uh, to the producer. That's a net profit straight. And the manufacturing overhead is just 10%. Uh, administrative cost is about 12%. And direct materials, uh, which we think is perhaps the most, uh, 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 you know, the biggest cost component uh, in a glass of beer is accounts for just uh, 30%. So roughly 40% uh, goes as profit to the producer. I mean, we just uh, we just put that out there just to showcase that as a consumer, that is as a retail buyer, we don't have much control over the price that we pay. Whatever is the label price, you know, we have to pay. But that doesn't mean that as procurement professionals, we have to pay what the supplier quotes. Uh, as, as procurement professionals, we have much uh, greater lever in figuring out the cost component and then entering into a fact-based discussion with the supplier just so that we get the right and optimal price. So this is just uh, illustration to begin with uh, to showcase that as a retail buyer, we don't have much choice or control uh, over the price we pay, but as procurement professionals, we certainly have uh, control over the price that we pay for the products or services that we source. Uh, Robert, uh, any comment that you would like to make before I move yeah, on? Yeah, first of, of all, don't start arguing about this when you are drinking a beer in Amsterdam. That's not the right moment. <laughs> but I fully agree. As a procurement professional, you should have some insights into the industry cost profile. Otherwise, it's pretty hard to, to do a, a professional negotiations. So you should roughly know which cost drivers are the most relevant. Exactly.